Welcome to the Smart Business Revolution. 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 Do you want a revolution? Yeah. You say you want a revolution? Revolution. The revolution. It's going on right now. Welcome to The Revolution, the Smart Business Revolution podcast, where we ask today's most successful entrepreneurs to share the tools and strategies they use to build relationships and connections to grow their revenue. Now, now, your host for The Revolution, John Corcoran. All right. Welcome, everyone. John Corkin here. I am the host of this show. You know, you guys probably know my story. I've been the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast for about 10 years. I was a recovering political hack. Well, I guess still am. Recovering lawyer. Spent years working in politics, including as a spatriarch with stints working in the Clinton White House and for a California governor. And I've been, for the last five years, partnered with Dr. Jeremy Weiss, who hopefully will be joining us in a little bit, talking about helping people to build life-changing relationships using podcasts and content marketing. I've been doing it for about 10 years and Jeremy has as well. And I've had the privilege during that time to talk to so many top CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs of all kinds of different companies and organizations, ranging from organizations like YPO and EO to Activation Blizzard, Lending Tree, Open Table, and many more. I'm also the co-founder, of course, with Dr. Jeremy Weiss of Rise25, where we help B2B businesses with the strategy and production they need to create a podcast and content marketing that produces tremendous ROI and clients and referrals and strategic partnerships. And in this episode, this special live episode, we're going to be talking about how to build authority in your field. We're going to be breaking that down, how to build your authority so that people listen to you in your area of expertise. But first, before we get to that, this is episode is brought to you by Rise25, where we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. If you're listening to this and you've ever thought, you know, should I do a podcast? Well, I say yes. I've been telling people for 10 years they should as well because it will change your life. You will build amazing relationships if you do it right. I highly recommend it to everyone. So if you want to learn more, go to rise25media.com. All right. So we're going to break this down and talk about some of the different elements around building authority. So first of all, I, I think you have to ask yourself, do you even need to build authority? And why are you building authority? But first, do you even need to meet, meet a, build authority? The reason why I say that, the reason why I say, do you need to build authority is because uh, initially, a lot of people tend to go and do what they have done previously, what they've done before. And they tend to do the same thing over and over and over again. So you, I see it all the time where I see people who have written a book. They've been practicing in their field for 20 years. Maybe they haven't even written a book, but they've been practicing in their field for 20 years. They've got all kinds of great past clients. They've got testimonials. They've got clients who say great things about them. Um, maybe they've written for different publications over the year. So they've, years. So they've um, built authority that way. In other words, they've built authority already. They have enough authority. And then it just becomes layering upon layer upon layer. You know, maybe they start teaching a lo uh, at a local college, you know, a, a professorship or something like that. Here is Dr. Jeremy Weiss. He's joining us. Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Weiss. Thanks for joining us. And um, so we're, we're in the midst of talking about, number one, do you even need to build authority and the problem of so many people who already have enough authority. And so, they, so, but they keep on layering it on because it's what they know and it's what they're comfortable with and what they keep on doing. So they sign up to teach a course at a, a college nearby, or they write an additional article for another esteemed publication, or they write an additional book, even though they've written a couple books already. And they kind of go back reflexively to things that they've done before and do more of the same. Any uh, thoughts on that, Dr. Jeremy? No, I mean, I think that um, there's multiple, if there's a, a multiple benefit to doing something that's going to boost your authority, um, then I'm all for it. If it's just a redundancy on something you've already done, unless there's other benefits to it, then there may be not as much of a need for it. Like, for example, like you said, you know, increasing authority, 
um, by having other titans of industry connecting with other titans of industry. If we're talking in, in the form of a podcast, right? Um, having another titan of industry on that increases your authority. I'm all for, right? Um, and, and that gets to a point that I definitely wanted to make, which was to um, not just create content in the abstract, to not just create content that builds authority, but also to use the content to grow your network, to connect with perhaps um, thought leaders in your field, uh, connect with potential referral partners, strategic partners, which is what you're getting at. Exactly, yeah. And so the other point we wanna make is, what's the big why? Why do you wanna build authority? What is the ultimate goal here? You know, you don't want to just do it just for the sake of vanity. You know, you don't want it just for the sake of get your name out there because you can keep doing that over and over again and you wouldn't be able to measure whether you actually are achieving results from it. It needs to actually result in some kind of metric that you're seeking to pursue. So is it getting clients? Is it, you know, getting more referrals? What is the end goal? Is it getting your business sold? Is it getting a job? What is the purpose behind the authority so that you can measure whether you've been successful or not? Jeremy, your thoughts on that? Well, what would you, what would you say is an example of that? Let's talk about vanity authority versus like actually worthwhile authority. Yeah. What would be an example of vanity authority versus worthwhile I'll, I'll give you, uh, yeah, I'll give you an example. So I actually was listening to a book on Audible the other day, which was, it was about seven or eight years old, um, but it was talking about, um, someone in that book was talking about how they believed that you should be on Twitter every day and tweeting 15 to 20 times a day in order to establish your authority. I would argue that that is not necessary. You know, maybe that would build your authority in certain fields. It de highly dependent on what industry that you're in, but it's not an end result. You know, the end result is clients in the door, revenue in the door, products sold, something like that. So you have to be clear on what that authority is going to lead to. Because if, if you tweet 15 times a day and you build authority, but it doesn't actually end up in any difference for your business, then what was the purpose? Yeah, it's like vanity metrics versus real metrics. So you're saying vanity metrics of maybe likes or followers or whatever. Now, if that results in non-vanity metrics, which is actually real relationships and doing business together, then that's totally fine. But I think oftentimes, sometimes we go after the vanity metrics when even having a small circle of five people as opposed to having a thousand people view something is way more beneficial for a business. Exactly. You just have to be clear on what the ultimate metric beyond the vanity metric is. So you're not just pursuing the vanity metric, I guess would be a way of saying it. And it goes for other social platforms as well. You know, I mean, you could go and, you know, create 15 TikTok videos a day, or you could post 15 times to Instagram. And, you know, maybe it does build some kind of authority in your field if your field is is active on that particular platform. But again, it's got to lead to some kind of result. Um, so that's another big one. Now let's talk, the third point we want to make is channels. So different, you want to think about what channels can you use in order to build authority? And there's there's a lot of them, right? So Things that build authority include a book. A book builds authority. Um, writing for publications, especially well-respected publications in your industry, in your field. Um, speaking on stage or virtually, so in person or virtually. Um, doing trainings or workshop helps to build your authority. And of course, podcasting, which we're huge advocates of as well. And I'll just speak from my own personal experience. I've done just about all of those, you know, and not to denigrate those different ones. There are advantages and disadvantages to each of them. But what I found was that if you are, want to use your content to build authority and also to build your network, that there were not, not any tool that really could hold a candle to podcasting. So for example, I wrote for Forbes one year or a couple of years. And you know, 
I built some great relationships with it. I used it in order to broaden my network and connect with some people. But ultimately, at the end of the year, I found that because of the, the amount of effort that it took to put into it, I maybe connected with a half dozen or a dozen different people because it took a lot of work to write these articles and interview people and all that kind of stuff. High, high bar for the quality that had to go in there. And ultimately, I found when I shifted my energy from doing that. And was that real quick, you know, that was we're talking maybe one or two articles for all that work or what's the kind of the output? Of it was, uh, no, it was I was actually in, profiling one person per article. One person. Got it. Yeah. So because I know you've done articles where you'll feature like 15 people possibly in an article before too. Yeah, and that probably takes a lot longer to do. It actually, I mean, that didn't even really save time, I think, because it, it was a lot of effort doing those. Even the, But the individual articles were really time-consuming as well. It took hours and hours to write the articles. You know, you compare that to doing a podcast, and with the podcast, you know, you've got this, this great tool, and Justin Crane is here. Justin, good to see you, buddy. Um, with the podcast, you've got this amazing tool. And if you do it right, if you delegate the pieces off of your plate, you focus on the highest and best use of your time, which is using the podcast as a tool to have a great conversation with a great person who maybe is in your network or maybe you never would have connected with otherwise, it is nowhere near that time consuming. So ultimately, when I devoted my energy and attention to that, I found that over the course of a year, I was able to build my network so much greater. You know, Even if you do a weekly podcast, that's 50 people that you're having a great conversation with using much less time than it took to write a book or it took to write, you know, long form articles or any of those sorts of things. So your thoughts, Jeremy, on different channels to use to build authority. Yeah. I mean, listen, I wouldn't have even attempted what you did because I am not huge on writing. Like it's just painful for me. You like writing itself. So that was probably slightly a disadvantage because you like doing it. I don't. So I, never even wanted to attempt that. So I'm also looking for the shortcut in what I'm good at. And I could have a 30 minute conversation with someone. And then, you know, obviously we have a team that helps get that and produce a nice final result that it becomes an article. Like, so if you think about over 10 years, twice a week, I could have two 30 minute conversations or like two, two episodes a week. That's, you know, um, that number of conversations every month and that 30 minute conversation turns into an article, a blog post. It goes on all the podcast channels. It goes on all the social media channels. I would, I, I wouldn't have gotten one article out the door in a year if I were you, you know, personally. So yeah. it's yeah. just an easier, it's just easier to have a conversation. And, and that kind of brings up the topic. John's like, well, I'm already busy. How do I have time? Well, First of all, we should already be talking to our best relationships anyways on a weekly or monthly basis. So I find it doesn't take more time because, you know, one of our good friends, you know, I and garlic, if we're I, I'm talking to him like every other day, possibly. So to have him on as a podcast guest, it's like just one of those times we need to just say, OK, we're going to record this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the truth. You know, it, there's so many ways in which it saves you time because one, you should be doing it anyways. Now, there are some people who don't, right? So then they suffer the roller coaster, the, the marketing roller coaster, because they're not doing consistent networking business development and they need to be doing it. So this is a way of building discipline while also creating content, while also getting personal and professional development at the same time. And, it, and it's something that, you know, holds your feet to the fire to do it. So I think that's a, a very important point, but it saves you time because you get access to higher caliber people than you would other otherwise ever get access to. And you're more referable. I, I'm a big connector. I love introducing people and it's much easier to introduce someone who has a podcast than it is someone who doesn't. You know, every time I try and introduce two people who don't have a podcast, there's kind of suspicious sometimes, you know, like one of them inevitably is like, wait a second, what, why are you introducing me to this web designer? I don't need a new web design, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's like, no, I just thought you guys would get along, you know, but with a podcast, you know, there's, there isn't that skepticism, which we, we naturally have. Yeah. I mean, uh, you mentioned too, John, back to one of the other points is kind of the vanity metrics versus real metrics. You know, we've come across people and my, one of my favorite John Wooden quotes is never mistake activity for achievement. And we've had people who come down and say, well, 
yeah, like I've been posting on Instagram like 11 times a day and and then you look and they have 100 connections on Instagram. Like, yeah. okay, well, yeah, that's, if you had a million or 10,000 or a significant amount, maybe that will make a difference. But the base they had there, um, didn't, it just didn't make sense. You know, right. they maybe felt good uh, by doing some activity, but was it really leading to the end result they wanted? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, final point I just want to make for everyone watching or listening to this is it's really about building authority is about consistency and discipline and focusing on the highest and best use of your time. Because, you know, I say to people this about podcasting all the time is look like as a busy individual CEO, entrepreneur, founder, executive, whatever your title is, look, you, you, the highest and best use of your time, the things that will actually build authority are not the things that people frequently do. Like you going into the back end of your website and posting something, not a good use of your time. You formatting RSS feed, not a good use of your time. That doesn't produce authority. What produces authority is you having great conversations and creating content and having great conversations with people that will lead to further collaborations, exposure, opportunities, client engagements, referrals, strategic partnerships. That's what moves the needle. And so really focusing, being consistent about it, not just doing it for a couple of months and then giving up, continuing going with it and focusing on the highest and best use of your time is really uh, another big point I would make for people. Final thoughts, Jeremy, anything else? No, I think, you know, just choose one that resonates with you that you are comfortable with that is part of your you know your sweet spot because doing it in like john said with consistency just choose some kind of regular schedule for yourself to do that activity some kind of content producing activity where and by the way it's also a give whether it's in an article or a podcast is you're you're not always talking about yourself you're just talking about the other person Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I mean, it goes back to, um, you know, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, um, which is a tremendous book. Ken, thanks for being here. Glad to have you here. Um, go check out that book because it's all about, you know, when you have an edifying conversation with someone, you take interest in that person, you showcase their idea. I mean, it's even better than doing it at a cocktail party or doing it over lunch or coffee or something like that, because you're actually taking their thought leadership, their expertise, which people aren't always asked about, you know, uh, depending what field, what type of person you're talking to, um, taking that and it, and it's sharing that wisdom in a way that they feel edified. They feel like a million bucks, um, and that they can, you know, share on their own LinkedIn and their family and friends will see it and, and they just feel wonderful. And then that leverages, leverages the principle of reciprocity, which is great. So, um, just to wrap up all this, Jeremy, where can people go to learn more about you and I and Rise25 and learn more about how to start a podcast? Yeah, I, I want to have one last question, but we will point people to, you know, um, rise25.com and our about page. And that's where I joke, John, it shows John's expertise and how he's photoshopped himself in with every pres with presidents. Yeah. That's his special skill. He just learns that's Photoshop. You want to build authority? Learn Photoshop. Exactly. And Photoshop yourself in with presidents. Yeah, me with I love my no, favorite is me with Teddy no. Roosevelt. That that one I <laughs> Photoshop actually. No, so. but you actually oh yeah. So go on the about page, check out our background, check out if you have questions about podcasting, you always email us. Um, but my last question, John, is maybe um, this is my last question. Like maybe you mentioned how to win friends, influence people. Are there any other uh, interesting books that people should check out? I mean, your your friend, uh, Perry Marshall, has a great book, 8020 Sales and Marketing. I'm probably butchering the name of it, but that's a great one. I mean, that mm -hmm. that goes right to our point about highest and best use of your time, for sure. Um, I'm a, always a big fan of um, Give and Take by Adam Grant. And, um, you know, in that book, he basically uh, used a lot of scientific research to establish that it's the givers that rise to the top of the success ladder in life. And so uh, I'm a big fan of that book as well. Any, and for you, any others? I'm, I love all the ones about stories. So um, Tell to Win is an amazing one. Uh, actually, 
um, and made to stick by Chip and Dan Heath is also a great one about stories. Cause I think in general, everyone loves a good story, whether it's for entertainment or business or whatever it is. So, yeah. Yeah. And one more, um, is double double by Cameron Harold. Another one, um, that I was just going through yeah. again recently. And I think it, I've I think I've bought all of his books on Audible and listened <laughs> to all of Cameron Harold's books and interviewed them as well. So yes, exactly. All right, all right, folks. We'll wrap things up. Rise25.com or Rise25 e Media or email support at Rise25Media.com and you can learn more about us. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk again soon. Thank you for listening to the Smart Business Revolution podcast with John Corcoran. Find out more at smartbusinessrevolution.com. And while you're there, sign up for our email list and join the revolution. 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 And be listening for the next episode of the Smart Business Revolution podcast.